Hello everyone, Erin here from Queen of Ants and today I want to run through how to set up your ant farm. Now I have uh, mentioned in earlier videos that when you first get your ants you want to keep them in their test tube set up until it's really packed full of workers. So this is a lovely little funnel ant colony and I would say that they're actually not quite ready to move into a nest yet. So I would keep these ladies in the test tube for a bit longer until that was really full of worker ants. But once that is full, you're going to want to set up your nest. Here I've got the uh, Royale acrylic nest in medium size. And I've gone ahead and assembled that. Um, and we have a separate video and some written instructions to help you with that. Uh, so now we're gonna set it up and get it ready for our ants. So the first thing you want to do is take your little pipette or you can use a, a syringe or anything that you can um, get water into. And you're going to make this sponge here nice and moist by just squirting some water into this little hole here. So the, the sponge will go from a lighter color to a darker color when it's wet. So just enough uh, to give your ants some humidity in their nest. Once you've done that, we're going to pop both of the lids off the nest and you can take a little bit of ant sand. I have an open packet here and sprinkle that into your nest. Now you don't want to give them too much sand that they can actually dig tunnels in. So you just want to put a nice little layer under there. Not too much. It's not particularly deep. They're not going to try to tunnel in there, but just enough they can use it as they need. So once you've done that, I always like to add a second water source in the outworld. And the best way to do that is to take a spare test tube, just like this, fill it all the way up with water and block it with a cotton ball. Uh, and you can simply pop that into the outworld. The reason I like to use a test tube like this is because it lasts a long time. So the, the worst thing, the, the thing you don't want to happen is for your ants to run out of water. So we know that this lasts a long time and it's also very easy to see when it's getting empty. So you can simply take that out and refill it. Once you've got that in there, uh, we want to think about um, some food. So you may have a liquid feeder, something similar to this. And if you wanted to use that for your liquid food, you could. So you, you pop the top off, grab the top. I've got some uh, banana flavored ant juice here. So I'm going to squirt some of that juice into the top of the feeder. Fill that up. Then what we do is take the base, put that on top, and then we gently invert like so. So that's just enough coming out here for your ants to have a nice feed. So we'll pop that in. Your other option for ant juice, if you like, you can just use a little dish with just one or two drops into the dish here. The thing to be mindful of with this is that you don't put too much in that your ants actually get stuck and drown. So just one or two, two drops in here will be fine. Now, ants are a little bit tricky in that they will probably try to cover their food with sand. Whether you use the dish or the liquid feeder, they're most likely going to do that. There's not much we can do about it. That's a natural behavior. So just leave it be and just clean it out every week or two. Um, and just, as I said, try not to do, uh, pop too much food into the dish. The other thing you could use your dish for is if you have a protein jelly or another source of protein, um, whether it's our ant mousse or um, feeder insects or anything like that, you can pop a little bit of this into the dish and then into the outworld as well. Just be sure if you're feeding protein to remove anything left over after a day so that it doesn't go moldy. So now we've got um, water in the front for humidity, a second source of water for them to drink. We've got our, our food, both our ant juice and a protein source out there. And that's pretty much all your ants need. But if you like at this point, you can also decorate your outworld with any decorations you like. Um, I like to use natural decorations like sticks and leaves, gum nuts, uh, anything like that. But you can use other things, little toys, or you could um, create little themed outworlds. 
that's really up to you. Um, but yeah, I just like a few sticks and things like that. And that's it. Your ant uh, farm is now ready for ants. So in my next video, if you like to tune in, I'm going to show you how to actually move your ants from their test tube setup into a nest setup like this. I'll catch you then. Bye.